So today I'm going to show you how I created this animation using Rough Animator. This video is going to be a little bit more in depth than some of my earlier ones so if you are a newbie to Rough Animator then maybe just go and check out one of those simpler ones um, before you have a look at this one because it might be a little bit confusing. So in this video I'm going to show you lots of different things. Firstly I'm going to show you how to make these little stars and this red line that kind of loops around the text as it animates in. Then I'm going to show you how I flooded the lettering into a different colour, so this transition in a minute here, and then that one as well. And then I'm just going to show you also how I made the bill animate in at the end there. And then you'll have all the tools to create something just as awesome yourself. So um, I'm going to start actually in Procreate. So I didn't actually do any of this, like creating the lettering in Rough Anime. So I did it all in Procreate because I prefer to use it um, for things like this because the brushes are a little bit better. So just to kind of give you a little outline of what I've got here. So um, there's a couple of updates in Procreate, which means that now you can export your different layers, which is really handy for Rough Animator. So I've got my Chicago type in black without a background so when I export it I export it without a background as a PNG just so that it brings it into Rough Animator nice and clean just the type that I need then I've got the same thing but with this red outline and white in the middle then I've got the same thing just in white without that red outline then I've got it all in red so that's all the different pieces I need for the Chicago then I've also got this type here which is just balls written in, um, I can't remember what font it was now, but one of the inbuilt fonts into Procreate and then I've just put like a blur around it so that it's got that white kind of outline. And then the last thing I've got here is the ball. So this is just something that I've kind of um, copied from like the Chicago Bulls um, logo um, and just made a couple of little tweaks to it. But here again, when I export that, just going to export it without the background colour so that it comes in like as a see-through object, just with those black lines. And to export, all you want to do is, oh, not, not that, you want to go up here, no, <laughs> you want to go up here, um, go to share, and then if you go to share layers, PNG files, and then if you turn off the background when you do that, once you click that, it will export each of your layers out as a PNG, hopefully with a transparent background. So then, once you come into Rough Hanamisa, um, you can import all your stuff. I think you should probably know how to do that from my other videos. And then we're starting off with this quite simple thing that I've done before. I think I did use a guide as well for this one. Not sure where that layer is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so this is my mad guide. So you can see the lines here, but this blob is just following it around so that it feels really fluid and kind of smooth. Um, but that's that's fairly simple, that bit. So I'm just going to show you really quickly how to create these little stars because um, they're super, super easy, but they look quite, quite good when you do them just quickly. It looks like they're sort of flashing and like glistening. So I've just called this layer flourishes. Um, and basically all you need to do is um, around the type that's animating in, you, for the first frame you just start off with like a little dot and then you have a tiny little cross and then that just gets a little bit bigger and bigger and it can be super messy like I just scrolled these down really quick. But because it happens so quickly, you don't really notice that it's really messy. So I've done one, two, three, four, five frames of it enlarging. And then one, two, three, four frames of it getting smaller again. So in total, you've got nine frames there. There's something appearing just as a dot and then just enlarging, enlarging, and then coming back down again and just disappearing completely. Um, and you can just like copy and paste those all over. Um, they work quite well just to sort of accentuate that, um, like the animation. Uh, so then I'm just gonna talk you through this red line here. 
again, I used a guide for this one. So this line here, sorry, there's like loads of lines on here. <laughs> but this one, the one that's doing like a loop loop, um, I drew in around my text because I knew that uh, it was going to animate through that. So I came in around it and I just started to draw along that line on the same flourishes layer. So again, just starting really, really small here and then quite quickly getting a lot bigger. Um, and it kind of goes with the momentum of this line because it starts off kind of slow and almost like a roller coaster when it comes over like um, a peak, you know, it starts off quite slow and then suddenly it like, it really gets going and it goes quite quickly. So here it kind of builds quite quick and then it slides down there. So we've got quite a long line here, which means that it's moving quite quickly. And then you can see here, that one's quite long as well, but the next, the next line starts about halfway through the line before. So that's the sort of halfway point up there. And then that's where the next one's finishing, which just means it's quite quick. Um, but as long as it's still kind of rooted on that green line, it means that it's gonna look like it's sort of flowing and it's fluid. So I'm just going to go through this quite slowly so you can see exactly what I've done. And as it gets to the end of that line, it's just getting a little bit skinnier and smaller until it just completely disappears. Okay. Then... see some extra little flourishes and things I've added in here like when it reaches the top of that A because there's like a sharp kind of point there it just sort of spurts out this little bit of red it sounds kind of gross um, and that then sort of twirls again a little guide on there always use your guides they're actually quite handy So we've got lots more of those stars happening. And then this bit here is what's going to flood it all with red. Oh, what did I do? Um, so this is when, because obviously I started with the black type. At this point, I added in the red Chicago type as well. Um, and I just laid it on top of this layer. Um, and when that little blob hits that layer, start of, some of my red starts to become visible. So basically if you overlay your, well what I've done is I've overlaid my red type directly on top of the black type. And then each time I'm just erasing a little bit of the red type, if that makes sense. Well, I'm not, I'm adding to it, but the way I did it was I erased it bit by bit, kind of backwards. Um, so, like here, if you imagine with the red, I've erased all of this here, so that you can just see this part. Okay, I've tried to keep the movement quite fluid even within this space, so we've still got nice, like, curvy lines. Um, it's almost like this red is like a liquid and it's kind of filling up the black text. So I basically just duped the red layer loads and then each time erased a little bit less. So here I would have erased all of this part here and then, then erased just that a little bit less. So it's kind of flooding it all. Once that finishes, um, I didn't want that sort of movement to just stop. So we've got this little like fly away little bit of red that kind of spurts out the end and makes its way round the top. Now it's got this little bit of white coming in which I've just drawn in rough animator. Um, and then this is the part where it's going to flood it white with a red outline. So again, by 
import my layer that had the red outline, which was that one. Um, you basically just do the same thing um, as I did with the red. You import your next layer, so the white with the red outline, directly on top of the one that you've already got. And then you're just erasing bits behind this blob. I wanted the blob to sort of wipe, wipe the red out of the type and just put it in the outline. So like this, so even once the blob is over there, you've still got this line which is kind of following it through. So next thing, oh I didn't tell you about this bit. Um, so at the end of that, I've got a little, I made the Chicago just shake a tiny bit, because it's kind of the end of that bit of animation. So yeah, it just has a little tiny shake to it, really, really subtle. Obviously you can see it here because I'm going really slowly, but all I did there is with this selection tool, select all of that and just rotate it a tiny bit. So like for the first frame, I'd rotate it to the left a tiny bit and then to the left a tiny bit more and then it would go back to the right. Um, almost like <laughs> it's been like, bounced and then it's just settling in the middle so each time you want a little bit of a, a, a little bit less rotation on each side so that it feels natural um, let me just play that bit it's quite quick that rotation and then Balls that was animated in quite simply just coming in from the left kind of appearing. That's quite an easy bit. And then, oh, and then my bowl. This was a fun bit. So here's the bowl. Um, I might just turn everything else off for the moment whilst I talk about the bowl. So the bowl, you saw in Procreate that I had the bowl just as this outline. Um, I did want to make him sort of move a little bit, so I made him do this kind of creepy blink and then his nose kind of <laughs> scrunches up a little bit because he's a big scary bull. Um, but to make him kind of animate in, for each frame I just erased certain parts. So I knew I wanted it to animate in from the center. I thought that was felt quite kind of powerful coming in with his big eyebrows that are quite menacing. So it comes in from the middle, starts with that eyebrow shape, that grows and then symmetrically, so doing the same on each side to try and keep it nice and neat. I just uh, started raising less. And then to make him blink, I then just duped my final frame. So I duped that. And then I just kind of erased parts of his eyes so that, so that, that the, the pupil wasn't there and it looks like his, his eyes were closed. So I just do that really slowly. You'll be able to see exactly what I did. And then if you check the nostrils as well, so his, his whole nose just moves up a tiny bit. And then his nostrils kind of flare, <laughs> like he's an angry bull. And then he opens his eyes again. So he stays like that for a little bit. And then you just repeat the same process. So he's disappearing back into that eye shape. So this time, instead of disappearing into the eyebrows, I just made it disappear into those eyes. So he's almost like closing his eyes again as you fade out. Let me just play that through again. Check 
I haven't missed anything. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And if you have got any questions or anything, just let me know in the comments below. I have absolutely no affiliation with the Chicago Bulls, in case you're wondering. This isn't an advert or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't own, I don't own any of that. I mean, I, to be fair, I drew this, drew that, drew that. I copied that. That's the only thing I copied, the bull, the face of the bull. But, I mean, by the look of Google Images, it changed quite a lot anyway. Um, but yeah, th I mean, don't be thinking this is an advert for the Chicago Bulls or anything, because... It's not. I was just watching The Last Dance on Netflix and I was inspired. You should watch it, it's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you're listening, Chicago Bulls, and you want this, hit me up.